another CIT thriller inside the hot center. This time the Upstate Spartans come away with a one-point victory, 73-72 the final over the James Madison Dukes. And, Phil, you look back at this game, we saw the lead change hands 12 times. We were tied on eight separate occasions. Those numbers are an indication of a back-and-forth affair that kept the fans in the hot center on the edge of their seats right up to the buzzer. A lot of threes as well, just a perimeter onslaught from beyond the arc. Uh, James Madison able to throw in 14 threes with just one point short. Looked like for a moment the Dukes had this one with a, with a healthy lead late in the game, but give up state credit. Uh, just a furious comeback and a big defensive stop late to win the game. Let's take a look back at the highlights from this contest. You're going to see a whole lot of Ty Green. We'll give you his numbers in just a moment. The A-Sun Player of the Year came to life, especially when necessary down the stretch in the second half, and our highlights package begins with him. Well, and Fred Miller as well, 18 points and some big shots beyond the arc, but it was Green uh, pouring in 26 tonight, the Atlantic Sun Player of the Year, including six threes, and they needed every last one of them uh, as the Dukes, as we've said, put up a valiant, valiant effort on the road as James Madison season's end. We mentioned two of the seniors in Green and Miller who you're seeing a great deal of. It was Mario Blessing's defensive play at the end that really helped the Spartans stand strong and that defensive stop giving them the one-point victory. It was a hard-fought battle inside. You called it, Phil, a lot of the shots out on the perimeter, and that really made the difference in this basketball game for Upstate, the way they were able to hit some shots outside late in the contest and then stand strong on the defensive side of the basketball. Let's look at the numbers from this one. The big number at the top, we've already given you 73-72, but what else on this stat sheet besides the three-point field goal percentage jumps out at you? Well, one of the reasons JMU almost won this game is they forced 13 turnovers and they got 22 points off those turnovers, a one stat that doesn't show up. But you see Upstate with that rebounding edge, 36 to 30. A lot of that came late and getting some stops. And, uh, you know, stat sheet often tells you a lot. Uh, you see the three-point shooting and JMU shoots 52%, but uh, and the terrible cliche, the only stat that matters, Upstate with one more than JMU tonight. Well, we said it, we knew one of these two teams are going to have their season come to a close, a tragedy for either. But Upstate does survive and move forward. We talked about Ty Green's performance in making that a reality. He led the way for the Spartans with 26, and Jackson Kent. What can you say about how hot he was out of the gate and the difference he made throughout? He led. The Dukes with 19, but Green leads all scorers with 26. You see the rest of his numbers as well. Yeah, Ken, a lot of his points coming in the first half, but did hit some big shots late. And, of course, Green with the 26 points and the four assists. It, uh, it was not a sloppy basketball game by any stretch. Not that we really maybe expected that, but not really any sloppy stretches for either team. Uh, some good defense, a lot of zone, uh, a lot of threes, and, and a heck of a finish here at Spartanburg. Eddie Payne and a couple of his seniors visited with the media after this one. Here are their thoughts. So all in all, it's, it's, a, it's a terrific win, really a win of perseverance. The adjustment we had to make was the shot clock was 30 seconds. Um, and, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a little bit different. You know, you've just started and you look up and you're like, okay, there's 10 seconds. we got to go do something. And, you know, I just tried to find a little room and, you know, throw it up there like I always do. A couple of them fell late for us. So it was a big win for us. When they made the runs, we stayed we stayed poised. Uh, you know, coaches they they called some timeouts in some good situations, got us in the right um, you know sets and plays, and we responded by making plays. And we like I said, we stayed poised down the stretch. You know, you can't panic in those situations. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we made just one more play than they did. Yeah, he just got open after uh, he dove to the basket. And I just saw him, so it was a little quick hitter. Yeah, I mean they were. They were kind of in the scramble. They were chasing us a little bit, and, and they got lost on the weak side. That was a good vision. Fred Fred has good vision about things like that, and that was a big play, obviously. Uh, I believe Ty started the energy. He said uh, he talked to everybody in the huddle. He was like, me, Ty, and Mario, we don't want this to be our last game. So we just kind of – everybody put all their energy into for the last four minutes, and it's just what we work for all throughout the practices and every day. So we didn't want to lose, so we had to put a lot of energy into it. I think it's been very significant for us. I mean, we've we've only been eligible to play in postseason for four years, All right? So three of those years we've gone to postseason. So that's a significant thing. I mean, you know, it gives the the mid major programs a chance to extend their season, and you do it against good teams. Um, you know, like I said, these guys tied for the first in in the Colonial, so they're a good quality team and. Um, 
but it, you know, it also gives us a sense of uh, a success, a sense of uh, you know, we're still working, we're still we're playing in a tournament. We're not just playing games. We're in a tournament, and uh, you know, our goal is to win them all. You know, now we got to play better and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, that's what we're playing for. So. You, you know, that's a little bit different, I think. I, as players, they would probably agree with that. I think it's different when you're playing in a tournament. And I think that experience that these players have helps them help, – won't help these guys. It will wherever they're going, and they're going to play somewhere. But, you know, it, it helps our get, returner players, and it helps those guys on the bench who don't get to play. They get to experience and see it. And, it, you know, it's a standard that, that our program uh, has now. And that, that's what we're playing for. I mean, a lot of the talk I've seen is about the CBI, you know, tournament. I think the CIT has done a much better job in the last couple of years than the CBI has. But anyway, to us, you know, obviously your goal as a mid-major is to make the NCAA tournament. But you can have a great year and, you know, not go to the tournament. And, like, this is, you know, this is your reward for a great year. You know, generally these are all top three teams in their league. And, you know, it's, it's good basketball. There's really good players. I mean, you're playing – upper level competition and a lot of these teams were either right there going to the NCAA tournament like we were um, but you know this is a reward for us to be able to play in front of our fans which is a huge deal to all of us you know just to give them give the fans the reward as well for coming and supporting so the CIT it's a it's a big deal and uh, I think they have a really good field this year and we're we're happy to to advance when the fans do get loud and get going and get behind you it gives you energy I mean you can feel it you know, when your legs are a little gas, I mean, you literally feel it. You're like, okay, you know, we got we got some people behind us. Let's do this. And you know, it's you know, it's a small thing, but when they get going, you know, it it really does make a difference. Um, and I think most people would say that that's why having a home game, especially in the postseason, is huge. So the Spartans, who drop a thriller in the CIT on this floor a year ago, respond with a clutch finish defensively. They win. They survive. They advance. And now we look at some of the scores from around the CIT to give you a sense of who else has survived the first round of this tournament. And we remind you, as you look at these scores, the CIT uses an old NIT-type format in which they reseed geographically after the finish of each round. So once all the first round games are done on Thursday, the teams that remain will be paired up based upon geography. Here's what's happened elsewhere around the country tonight. As you can see, Eastern Kentucky surviving, Eastern Illinois advancing, Lafayette leading the way, the Raging Cajuns with some control late in the second half, and Bowling Green winning a thriller over St. Francis of Pennsylvania. And these are not the only games of this tournament, of course, Florida Gulf Coast, uh, an A-Sun team still has yet to play in this tournament, uh, but you see the four other games, uh, three of them going final, still awaiting to see who Upstate will play later on this week or weekend. And you'll want to keep an eye on UpstateSpartans.com as well as the CIT tournament website to find out what those second round pairings will be. Again, first round games will be going on through Thursday and we expect either Friday or Saturday the Spartans will play again as their season continues. How do you put a wrap on this one? What are your final thoughts? Well, you know, a lot of times you come into a first round CIT game, you don't really know what to expect. You don't know how the teams are going to come out and both teams came out and played. They not only played extremely hard, they played extremely well. They gave good effort and they executed well. Uh, I think both coaches have to be very proud of their effort. Not a lot of times does a team come on the road, make 14 threes, and get beat. Eddie Payne mentioned that in his press conference. So give all the credit to JMU, but Upstate with some big, big, big plays down the stretch. And they've got at least one more in them, Jason. Another postseason thriller inside the Hodge Center. Upstate comes away victorious. A one-point win for the Spartans. The season rolls on. We'll look forward to visiting with you again in the second round of the CIT. Once again, our final on this night in Spartanburg. 73-72, Upstate over James Madison.